morning heart devotion. To start off, let's offer our greeting about our heavenly parents and true parents. 전진 참모님께 경배 바로. And now to lead us through the family pledge, I'd like to invite Reverend Milhan Stevens. 가정 맹세 1. 자녀급 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 본향 땅을 찾아 본연의 창조 이상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 장건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 2. 자녀급 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자, 국가에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 자녀급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 자녀급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조 이상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 자녀급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 자녀급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 찬원을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 자녀극 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 자녀급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 자녀급 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Thank you, Reverend Mohan Stevens. And now to open us up in prayer, I'd like to ask Justine Charitich. Just in territories. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Our loving heavenly parents and true parents. Today it's the 25th of uh, July. The time is going so fast, especially as we age. It's an unprecedented moment, Father, and the time we are living. And we are so privileged to be here, to be with you, pursuing to build the kingdom of heaven. But we fall short always. Our Heavenly Father, you don't judge us. You believe in us always. And our true parents believe in us, always encouraging us. Our true mother always is saying, I believe in you, no matter what. I'm so grateful to be part of this moment, this golden time. And I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out, Father, on our true mother. A special father for many, many of us. She's our only parent remaining here on earth, Heavenly Father. And she did say that whatever we do when she's gone, whatever offering we can bring, it won't be the same as if we did it when she's alive. 
And I truly pray that we can keep that in mind every single day and push ourselves and go beyond our daily realities. Heavenly Father, look at each and every one of us, all your sons and daughters gathered here. We all, all want the same. Although we have different situations, but we all want the same. We truly want to build the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And sometimes, Father, I pray that I can truly have a glimpse of that kingdom of heaven, even just in a dream, to see what it will, would look like if the fall did not happen. But Heavenly Father, we know that also it will come from our own hearts, from our own families. But Father, I know that you are so far away. I am so far away, Heavenly Father, from that kingdom. But I want it so badly to happen. And I want to contribute, Father, as much as possible, Father, especially we for generation. We have not the luxury of time anymore. We have lived such a long time compared to what is left. And we see so many of our loved ones, our brothers and sisters going by one by one. So Heavenly Father, we truly sincerely want to offer this time with gratitude, with a sincere devotion, Heavenly Father. And we want to let you lead us. We want to empty ourselves to really become zero and lead us, Heavenly Father, because you created us so that we can be your extension we can be in a vibrational tune with you, your thoughts to be our thoughts, your actions to be our actions, Heavenly Father, to be your temples, to be your residence, Heavenly Father, so that you can lead us, you can enjoy life with us, Heavenly Father. You can enjoy our children, our husband and wives, everything in the creation with us, Heavenly Father. You can touch the creation with our hands, Heavenly Father. And that is what I'm praying for, Father, that to happen. You have waited for so long, but now our true parents are here. Chony Gook has been established, Heavenly Father. The foundation is here, Father. We have it just to have such a leap of faith absolute faith. Sometimes when I think of what happened in the Old Testament, what you have done with the Israelites on a zero foundation, these were people with a really difficult to lead, Heavenly Father, and yet you have a, you've done this incredible things with them. And when I think of this foundation of our true parents, what you can accomplish with us, it's immense, it's unimaginable, Heavenly Father. You, we just need to have a faith. We must have a faith. We are so grateful to be reminded of our responsibility. Heavenly Father, led in such a simple and clear way, have that clarity with your words with, by Dr. Young, who is explaining day in and day out, many times repeating the same thing, Father, so that you can get it, Heavenly Father. And I truly, truly pray, pray that we open our hearts, our minds today and every day, not just to come every morning here and listen and go, but practicing it, bringing a result, a substantial result, a witnessing, getting spiritual children, Heavenly Father, really building a true kingdom of heaven in reality, Heavenly Father, bringing our families, our relatives, Heavenly Father. That's the true joy. That's the true joy, Father, we can experience, Heavenly Father, when everything around us is changing for the better. And even if there is so much tribulation and suffering, we must understand that that's really a launching part to propel us to a new level of a providence, Heavenly Father. And we must hold on to you, to true parents, tightly with joy and happiness because that's all there is. It's joy and happiness we are created for, Heavenly Father. And we want it so badly. We want to experience the true joy and happiness with you and with our true parents and with all our brothers and sisters. So, Heavenly Father, I want to offer you this moment and this prayer and this audience and all our brothers and sisters and most importantly, Dr. Young, Heavenly Father, please be with him and guide him and with his family so that he can lead us 
in that promised land that you are all fighting for and waiting for. Thank you so much. I offer this prayer for gratitude. And I report in my name, Justin Cherutich, of the Cherutich Blessed Sandra family. Aju. Aju, thank you, Justin Cherutich. What a, what a heartfelt prayer. My God, thank you so much for your sincere and inner prayer. Thank you, Dr. Young. Thank you, Aunt Justine, for opening us up with such a, a deep, heartfelt prayer. Friends, this is, we're going to go on to our gratitude. So just take a moment to think about what you're grateful for this morning. Share with whoever you're paired out in your breakout with, and uh, we'll be back here to share with everyone else. See you all in seven minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful sharing in your breakout. I was with Sailor Juma from Houston, Texas, and uh, I believe Etsuko Kaneko. That's right. I'd like to first call on Etsuko Kaneko-san, if you could please unmute and share with us your gratitude points this morning. Uh, hi, good morning. I really impressed the last, let's for the act testimony for the these two days. It's really, I was wonder how young people receive the, those words and then the a workshop, I mean, at the Chombo event. And then uh, his sincere testimony is so moved for me. My son went to uh, yesterday. He's, he's, his reflection is a little bit, you know, the, not clear, more uh, realistic answer he gave me. <laughs> so that's why, you know, the, oh, this is a second generation way to go. Or, uh, but, you know, the, this Ford said, this person said, you know, the, it's really sincerely moved, you know, the wish paper ceremony and other things. I wish I could hear more from him. But also, you know, the, thanks to Q&A, and then uh, the one, in person ask when the two mother went to a speech or who gonna be a leader or something. But I felt for me, I need to prepare for the you know that happen. So then within the five years, Dr. Young giving us that the morning devotion education and also Fundoke, being that the tribal messiah is the relay on the strong leader. And then uh, you know, bring the God and Chupanis to us, to the as a tribal messiah to do something on the earth, make peaceful world, restore the history and many things. But you know, the, for the second generation, they are going to think about how gonna take responsible or not. That was a good chance to remind me also, you know, to throw out to. Uh, you know, the people who are thinking that the seriously how we can take responsible and how we can prepare for that. That was a really appreciated question for me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Echiko san, for your sharing. Kamsahamida, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Echiko san. Uh, next, I'd like to call on uh, my brother from Minnesota, Ricky Manning. <laughs> you can please unmute, share with us any gratitude points this morning. So this is my first time joining in a long time, and I get picked off. I see. Ah, thank you. <laughs> well, I was looking forward to hear Sailor Jumas, but I guess not. Um, I missed you, Sailor. She was also from Minnesota as well. Okay, so um, my, my sharings. So I was lucky and fortunate enough to be in a room with a, uh, Uncle Mitch Dixon. And um, so, yeah, I, I really had to drag myself out of bed for this one. And I'm like, oh, so tired. And then I hear Uncle Mitch, he goes, I'm thankful for God and your parents. And I'm like, oh, this is a very first year answer. And it was uh, very humbling and centering. But like he started from like the center and then he expanded onwards and he like included me at the very end. I'm like, oh, I feel a bit of love. And then I was like, okay, what how about you, Ricky? And I'm like, okay. Uh, I feel a bit humbled. So I'm grateful for Uncle Mitch Dixon. Uh, I think he's really like, he's very centered and hearing his answer has like centered me. I'm easily influenced. And I'm grateful for Dr. Young and this resource that I should utilize more and for the whole community on this platform as well. So yes, that is what I'm grateful for. And yeah. I'm just grateful for the morning and I'm positive the long we get better and it's been uh, a great start for you. now. Thank you, Ricky. I I just uh, I'm so grateful to see such a handsome man so sharing. Kamsahamida Ricky. Meaning Kamsahamida. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, great to see you on. All right, brothers and sisters, we're gonna get started with our uh, morning devotion. So let's prepare our hearts and mind to receive our heavenly inspiration through our beloved continental director. Dr. Chonshik Yong. 안녕하세요. Good morning, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, the clergy and ambassador for peace. 안녕하십니까. How was the Chanboy event? It was good, my brothers and sisters. 
I got a very, very strong inspiration through the Chanbo event. What I, what I did in Asia, I really tried to do in America as well. I think, uh, of course, we can do sometimes ancestral liberation and blessing ceremony, but wishing paper ceremony, I think this is the best opportunity to witness people. We can use it as a witnessing tool. So when we have a, often this kind of wish paper ceremony, we can educate many uh, young people, at the same time, many new people. I'm telling you more details. I think this is a, can be very, very powerful tool for witnessing. So I think, uh, I think you know, if really worked together with the spiritual world, center on Chanbo event, we can break through a lot of, uh, you know, about the, with, with our witnessing goal. Yesterday was the second day of a Hyojong Chanbo special event, and we had ancestor liberation and blessing ceremony at Belvedere. It is a very beautiful event. Thanks to True Mother's love and grace, we were able to bless our ancestors up to 430 generations in Chanbo USA branch. In the afternoon, we had a special education about spiritual world for second and third generation, and uh, about 400 people participated. After lecture, uh, we had a question and a question and answer session. Thank you, True Mother, for your love and care for our second and third generation. Today, I'd like to talk about the role of women uh, from the True Mother uh, Anthology Group 1. Let's start. The role of women. When it comes to educating and raising children, the mother has to be stronger than the father. That is why I told my daughters-in-law, you have to follow the traditions and become stronger than your husbands. The mother's role was crucial during Israel's course of paying indemnity while living in a difficult environment. It is the same with the Unification Church. Women have the responsibility to march at the front line, organize and handle everything, and help the men. Representing the entire world, you should offer repentance by praying sincerely. For the past 40 years, we have continued to be indebted to you, causing only trouble without being able to repay anything. Please look at us, your inadequate children, with compassion. We will do our best. We beseech that you trust and stay with us one more time. I sincerely pray that you become blessed families, Unification Church members who live a life of practice and action. This is the last time God is trusting us again. This is our last chance. Hence, I hope you become blessed children who, at the end of your lives, go to the spiritual world and hear the following from Father. Ah, you have come. Happy to see you at last. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. Through Mother emphasized that the, the Unification Church mothers should take the lead in educating their children, continuing, continuing the tradition of true parents. Even if we look at history, we know well that behind the great people, their mothers always play a big role. There were uh, Isaac's mother, Jacob's mother, Joseph's mother, Moses' mother, true mother's mother, and true father's mother. All women, all mothers figure in behind for the central figures. They are, they were so great. The present era has passed the era of male dominated archangels and the female centered era has arrived as Eve is restored as the original mother. Husband need to cooperate well so that the mother can fulfill her mother's role well 
at home, at church. Through mother also said, women have the responsibility to march at the front line, organize, handle everything, and help, help the men. Through mother said that this is the last chance she gives, uh, gives us instructions while she is alive. That's why she said that we must become blessed families through Father Kenzi and welcome happily when we go to the spiritual world of the end of our lives. Leaving divine principle again, the development, perfection, and the features of the spirit world, a spirit self. Let's start. Sensibilities of a spirit. All the sensibilities of a spirit are cultivated through the reciprocal relationship with the physical self during earthly life. Therefore, only when a person reaches perfection and is totally immersed in the love of God while on earth, can he fully delight in the love of God as a spirit after his death. All the qualities of the spirit self are developed while it abides in the physical self. Sinful conduct during earthly life aggravates evil and ugliness in the spirit of a fallen person, while the redemption of sins granted during earthly life opens the way for his spirit to become good. This was the reason Jesus had to come to the earth in the flesh to save sinful humanity. We must lead a good life while we are on the earth. In Matthew 16, 19, Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven to Peter, who remained on the earth. And in Matthew 18, 18, he said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Because the primary object of the providence of restoration must be carried out on earth. Yes. So let's just study Father's word. The attitude of a person of faith. Our body has something similar to the sense of touch that makes contact with everything. Your mind emits something like invisible electronic waves to look for its own object. Therefore, believers must think that everything is in a reciprocal relationship with them. This is why we must think that the attitude of a person of faith is to come out and relate with everything. Why must we do this? This is because the fall was the loss of all relationships, the relationship with nature, the relationship with the true nature of human beings, and the relationship with God's true nature were all severed. In order to restore the world of severed relationships, we must always take action that will help us connect to these relationships. As long as we, as long as we take these kinds of steps, we will be able to develop these relationships. If we don't have an attitude to restore this, then we will not be able to restore the environment. This is the most theoretical approach. Thank you. The fall of man uh, severed all relationships. It is a byproduct of the fall that the relationship with God, the relationship with the true all things, the relationship with the spirit world and the original human relationship were all cut off. To overcome all of this, you need to restore all your relationships. Therefore, the attitude of the believer is to think that everything has to do with yourself. It is always a problem that fallen man is indifferent to what, what he should be most concerned with. Therefore, you need to be sincere in your relationship with everything. When done formally, it just flows away. What I don't want, I, I, what I don't do with all my sincerity and heart, 
doesn't not do anything for my spirit, uh, spiritual development. We must treat nature with love, treat humans with sincerity, and have a heart that truly misses God. In fact, sincerity saves everything. I went the more I study Father's word, and the more I relate to Reverend Johannes' guidance, I realized that, wow, sincerity is how important. In fact, sincerity saves everything. It is to treat, treat God with such almost sincerity. Even when dealing with each person, they are so precious. We treat each other with sincerity. Even when dealing with all things one by one, whenever you touch each item of the old things, really when you're dealing with you know, each of the items of all things one by one, we treat each other with the almost sincerity. Wow, God touched already each one of the old things item. I am touching that. Wow, how much precious it is. When that happens, any person is bound to grow and develop. That's why almost sincerity and chong songs are the most important. Fallen man is not like that. Always distinguish something, you know, ignore and no concern. Then we cannot restore the relationship with all, we cannot restore all our relationship. We need to restore back, you know. Whenever I relate with something with the nature and God and the relationship with any human being, a relationship with any, my mission, always I need to put my almost sincerity. There is no more gap. Okay? That is the best way I can grow up myself, I can develop myself, and I can relate to God. And then finally, I can become true man or a true woman, God's filial sons and daughters. Next. The path to bringing life to you. This is why we must all have a heart of seeking everything. After you pray in the morning, you may think, ah, something good will happen today. However, you must not think, oh, something good will just randomly happen today. What I'm saying is that you have to go actively find it. This kind of daily attitude must become part of your life of faith. Therefore, experience and practice are what will help bring life to you. These kind of truths will be revealed when you are half asleep. Yes. True Father teaches that a believer must always have a heart of seeking something. If the spirit world showed you through the dreams, it means that you should keep looking for it until you feel it as a reality. Last night I had a dream and then I prayed for Japan and then really God showed me the, what will happen in Japan. Wow. So when I concern and pray, immediately appear and the show the current reality and what will be happen. Wow, this is really amazing. It means to you, uh, it means to truly seek God, to truly seek the people God has prepared and truly seek the work that God desires. It's not about focusing on your own benefit. In the Bible, Matthew uh, 7, uh, uh, seven, uh, the chapter 7, verse 7 to 11 say, Ask and, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks the finds. And to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give them a stone. Or if he ask for a fish, will give him a snake. If you then, 
Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him. This Bible verse really inspire me that so much asking, seeking, and knocking at the door. The Bible speaks of the here is not to you know, satisfy one's own physical desires. The message to seek and find and knock on the door to, to the God you want to see. The person heaven has prepared and the path that leads to your original nature, then God will surely answer you. And asking, seeking, and knocking, Heavenly Father, how can I find the really prepared one? Where is he here? Where is he him? Where is, he, where is her? Really, with your sincerity, try to save someone's soul. Where is he? Where is she? Where are they? Sincerely asking and seeking and knocking, not centering on your own physical desires, my brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father, how can I become truly, truly true self? How can I become really your son and filial son? Asking and seeking and knocking. Heavenly Father, how to solve the, my children issue, Heavenly Father? For me, no idea, but you have an idea. If there is a way, I really, really want to find Heavenly Father with this kind of searching heart and asking heart and knocking heart very sincerely, not centering on your own self center. If you really ask God with your almost sincerity, God surely give answer. Why God cannot give answer? Your heart is not so sincere. Your heart is not so des desperate. Asking and seeking and knocking with a desperation when you lost your child all of a sudden and the mother become crazy looking for, searching for, where's my child, where's my child, and cry out, cry out here and there. Do you have that kind of desperation? If you have that kind of desperation and asking and seeking and knocking, God surely give you answer. Because of the lack of sincerity, lack of desperation, lack of tears and chongsong, without, without that kind of chongsong and that kind of really serious desperation and that God easily give you, you no appreciation, no appreciation. Satan accuses you. The reason why we cannot find or seek, seek it when we ask for it is because all motives are centered on our, our own self. Also, even if you seek and find with a sincere motive, you cannot have it unless your sincere heart reaches God. That's why your sincerity need to reach to heaven. How much are you serious for witnessing? I really want to witness this soul, this guy. You know, this is your son, Heavenly Father. This is your daughter, Heavenly Father. How much you really wait for that person to come back to your person? How much are you serious? Important thing is desperation and chongsong and always you know, searching heart, asking heart, knocking heart, very important. Today's youth ministry, become a pastor of the heart. Let's study. The law of love in the universe. Who will God bless? God's heart gives blessing to those who spend money in a valuable way and use things preciously without defiling them, no matter what it is. Even if a person does not know that God exists, if they value people and treat all things with value, 
He wants to bless them according to the law of universal love. Let's imagine that when someone makes a donation, they want the donation to be used preciously. And when they donate a precious item, they want it to be preserved well. Then God's heart always wants to give more to those who cherish it and take away from those who do not realize what is precious. This is a parent's heart. Thank you. The law of love in the universe and the law of God's blessing are the same. The law of the universe and God's blessing come to those who spend money in a valuable way and use things pre uh, preciously without their defiling them, no matter what it is, and treat everyone with utmost sincerity. God's heart and the parent heart also follow the same rules of this kind of the heart and the mindset. Continue. Comparison of the world of heart and the talent. If you do not regard a precious thing as precious and do not know its value, the giver is sorrowful. If you look at those who receive greater blessings, they value precious things. That is why parents want to give more to those who have more. When we look at the Bible without knowing the world of the heart, sometimes the Bible stories seem like curses. This is the story of the talent in the Bible in Matthew chapter 25, verse 28, 29. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. The servant ignored the one talent he had, did not make any profit with it. So the master took even the one talent he had and gave it to the servant who had 10 talents. In a way, it is incomprehensible. The world of the heart is the world that brings the benefits of love. Yes. In the world of a heart, if there is something valuable, it is considered more precious than the other person. And if you value what you have given and make a profit, you want to uh, uh, add more to it. This is the world of the heart, the heart of the parents. Uh, what I remember or uh, Mississippi or, you know, when I pitched to one state. And this state leader is a physical condition, not good, but wow, this guy gave a lot of do donation to me. But I checked through sub regional leader, how is his background? He's a very poor guy. And he gave everything what he has to me. I worry how does he survive? And then I talk to John Jackson. Hey, John Jackson, we need to return, not, we need to give back this money. Plus, I want to donate more for him. And I added more money and give back to him to take care of his life. My goodness, his mindset, his sincerity, he wants to offer everything what he has. That kind of the precious heart, God is working through that kind of the precious heart. If you do not regard our precious things as precious and do not know its value, the keyboard is sorrowful. If we do not look artistically at the many stories in the Bible, God may seem like a motionless God, such as the parable of the talent in the Bible. It seems a bit emotionless to say that everyone who has will receive more uh, and uh, abundance. And for those who do not have, even what they have will be taken from them. It makes God seems to have no love. But what we need to know is that the world of heart is a world that brings the benefits of love. Therefore, human beings are destined, destined to be born, grow with love. And then, very important, bear fruit. Our destiny is what? To 
bear fruit, reproduce and go to the spiritual world. There is no multiplication without growth. It is a certainly the common destiny of human beings to grow and bear fruit and multiply. No one can escape from this wall of a heart. That's why without bearing fruit, without growing, without multiplication, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. We need to wait at the waiting room. That's why our destiny, no matter what, does not matter you are disabled or you know you are a good guy or does not matter, or, you know. No matter what your spirit needs to grow and bear fruit and multiply. Next. Don't miss the moment and be faithful to the given reality. As we look back on our faith course up to now, we should feel sorrow and Han over the fact that we missed the moment because we did not properly understand true parents' words. Therefore, growing young people should not miss the moment by learning the lessons their predecessors learned from missing the moment and thinking about their hardships. When I see my seniors exhausted on the way, I must have compassion for them and make a resolution with tears, thinking that I will not miss the moment. If a person is not sincere about their given reality and responsibility, it is easy to just pretend and look good externally. Just because the signboard of the church is large and nicely hung, is the church good? What matters is content and quality. Even if the signboard of the church is poor, if the pastor is sincere and the members are sincere, the church will develop. The church does not develop by spreading information. However, even if one or two new members come to church, you must serve them well and give them an unforgettable impression. Yes. We should not miss the moment by learning from the lives of our seniors. As you look back on our faith course up to now, we should feel sorrow and harm over the fact that we missed the moment because we did not properly understand true parents' work. Some of the American brothers and sisters say that, Dr. Young, why didn't come to America more earlier than my life or faith it become more better? Oh my goodness. However, you should not criticize your senior for failing. Rather, we should be merciful to them and make a promise with tears, thinking that we will not miss the moment like, like they did. Why do so many people look back on their lives and regret having missed the moment? Is the result of the not being faithfully responsible for each moment in their given reality. If anyone runs forward only externally, they will only pursue results. So it is easy to just uh, pretend and look good externally. Therefore, the most important thing is my chong song and sincerity, no matter what I do. Think that heaven has given the responsibility entrusted to me and that uh, it is the will of heaven and, uh, and that I must experience meeting God there. You know, oh, I'm, I'm taking care of this job just temporarily. I don't like this job. I maybe I need to find another job. Of course, some case. But even though you are uncomfortable with some job, but you need to think that this is God's will. God give me and they put your own sincerity and God will provide a better job. That's why whatever you, anyone, anything you focus, even though you don't like it, but you need to focus, you need to think that this is God's will. God is the one who provides this job. You need to love your job. You need to love your current mission. And the thing and complain, this and that. This kind of person is hopeless. Where do, do I meet God apart from my responsibility? 
If you think of your current position as a temporary one, and if you only think externally in order to find a better place, your mind will float in the air. Then you will lose time. Therefore, I must put all my heart into the work given to me and treat the people I meet preciously as someone sent by God. Now with a preconceived notion, do not have, don't, don't have, don't, do not have the preconceived notion. This is really a problem. So how to overcome preconceived notion? You need to treat each one of them so precious. And God sent him to me. You need, if you think like that, then your three preconception is goes away. If you really attend each one of them preciously, God sent him to me, I need to welcome that person very well, then your any kind of preconceived notion is disappear. Wow, our mindset, how much important it is. That's why you need to love your job, your current mission, without complaining. Even though you dislike, but you put your sincerity. Anyone come to you, need to think that God sent, God sent him to you. Treat him preciously. With this kind of mindset and attitude and preciousness, I think you surely can develop your spiritual life, surely develop. Next. Become a pastor who inspires others. A pastor must be a person who moves each life one by one. That is why we must not allow the person who returned after being moved to keep their mouth shut. When some people hear this story, they can ignore it as a story of Abraham's time. Everyone may question it, saying that the reality is not so. But what you need to know is that even though the world has become secularized, its inner world is returning to the true world. It is turning back to the original world. You should know that everyone is longing for love. The reality is that anyone who finds the true truth is willing to sacrifice even their own life. God is behind the scenes driving us to return us to the original world, the world of the original mind. That's why people who miss the moment become sad and bear Han. But you can't just get frustrated and sit around. Even now, you must live the rest of your life with the sincere determination not to miss the moment. Yes, a pastor must be a person who moves each life one by one. That's why we must not we must not allow the person who returned after being moved to keep their mouths shut. Pastor must be good at personal touch ministry. One of the important my ministry is what? Personal touching. God's ministry is what? Personal touching. He touched each one of the all things item one by one. He touched each one of the human beings one by one. Parents want to touch each one of the children one by one. God's ministry is what? Personal touching ministry. We need to move each and every person in an unforgettable way with the heart of the parents who will love every single one of them. One thing we need to know is that all human beings want to return uh, to the original world and long for love. And the reality is that anyone who finds the truth, a true truth is willing, willing, willing to sacrifice even their own life. That's why anyone really find original mind, and anyone really find God, they, anyone really find the purpose of their life, they willingly can sacrifice, willing to sacrifice, willing to die. That is the human's nature. We need to know this is human reality and save people. Then the spirit world will surely work. This is because in spiritual world, everything you, uh, do, you, you do with sincerity and hard works. 
We have the mission to help people find the truth that they will give their lives freely. God is behind the scene, driving us to return us to original world, the world of the original mind. That's why whenever we uh, approach it with the people, we need to appeal their original mind. My brother says, everybody actually searching for God. Everybody, they try to follow their original mind. Final slide. Discover God's sorrow. Young people should be sincere and faithful in every moment without missing any moment by taking the experiences of their seniors as an example. We need to find a heart that pursues goodness and sincerity in our original mind and discover God's sorrow in our relationship with him. If we cannot find the tears of heavenly parent and true parents on the path of faith, we just look good externally again, and the rest of your life will be miserable. Don't blame heaven after you miss a moment. In the end, it all comes down to your own fault. It's easy to lose ourselves when we say we believe. You say you love others, but you don't practice love yourself, just making others do it. Therefore, I hope that you will be victorious in your responsibilities and relationships with all your heart, all your devotion, and all your will. Wow. Thank you so much, Heavenly Honey. You know, you know the, not to lose the moment and feel regret. I must be sincere and faithful in every moment with my given reality. We need to find a heart that pursues goodness and sincerity in our original mind. We must live a life that discover God's sorrow in our relationship with God. If we cannot find the, the tears of heavenly parents and true parents on the path of faith, we just look good externally again. And the rest of the, your life will be miserable. A person who has God's heart and decided to liberate it cannot miss the moment or waste time. That's why that was a strong father, the motivation for father to go forward after he discovered God's sorrowful heart and heart. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, I hope that you will be victorious in your responsibilities and relationship with all your heart and all your devotion and all your will. Thank you very much about uh, to joining this morning devotion. Let's really think that, you know, what is our sincerity, how to relate to our heaven and all things, everything. Um, today, living testimony, uh, I think our MC will introduce properly. Thank you very much. Have a nice Monday today. Thank you, Dr. Young, uh, for teaching us more about how to relate to heaven, but also expanding our heart to be more artistic to each other. Next, we're going to go to our living testimony. And today we're going to subregion three. Subregion three, I'd like to welcome up Nathan Bratcher. Nathan Bratcher. Good morning, Dr. Young. Good morning, everyone attending Morning Devotion. My name is Nathan Bratcher, and I would like to give a short testimony about recent outreach efforts to our elected members of Congress that we've been working on. Uh, recently, earlier in the summer, we've been collecting letters of support for National Parents Day. National Parents Day is recognized on the fourth Sunday of July every year in the United States. Uh, it was an effort uh, really pushed by our true parents to help uh, our nation realize the importance of parents and how parents can really make and decide the future for families and how they go and how um, families in our nation can um, really grow and blossom or they can really struggle if we don't have parents who provide a very loving place um, to learn about love, to learn about God in the family and in the household. The efforts to uh, connect to congressmen related to National Parents Day were um, related to UPF. Um, I've recently become a volunteer as a congressional outreach volunteer um, with UPF. And um, I just started earlier this year. We started collecting the letters earlier this summer. And it's been good to build relationships, to 
um, communicate with our members of Congress, with their staffers who we have to interact with a lot to communicate this information. And it's also helped us with um, connecting and, and getting to know each other. Another reason that's important is because we recently visited Washington, D.C. and were able to meet with members of Congress in person, um, this time representing the Washington Times. Recently, the Washington Times celebrated its 40th uh, anniversary. Uh, it was commemorated at a reception, and um, I was with uh, our other volunteer members and with um, Kayle and uh, also former congressmen that um, were so instrumental in making this happen. Um, Congressman John Doolittle and Congressman Dan Burton had both served um, distinguished terms in office, and uh, they've been really receptive to True Mother. Um, they've been so helpful to us in getting the door open and, and connecting with their relationships with members of Congress who they served with and uh, kind of leading us in to the conversation. Something that Dr. Jenkins noticed um, that was a very um, profound thing for me was that uh, when we work with the principal and, and having John the Baptist figures, um, there's so much that we can accomplish. We know about the principal. True parents know the principal. They taught it to us, and, and we're still learning how to apply it. We know of it and we know about it, but it's a, a daily challenge to really understand it and apply it. And he was absolutely right when he said that, that we, we do need John the Baptist figures um, to really make great headway into building relationships, into making an impact in everything that we can do for our true parents and for God's will here in America. There was so much that was able to happen um, because these congressmen could able would be able to lead us into these conversations and um, they were really interested in what our younger members had to say. Um, they asked us questions about what was concerns that we had and what was important to us and they were very receptive to listening. Um, none of our elected leaders are perfect, um, but we really have to trust what God has laid in front of us. We have to work past our own limitations and our own imperfections as well. Um, we can't wait for perfect leaders to come by because we have things that we need to do now. Um, God is really calling on us now to make a difference, to make an impact. Um, I'm grateful for the chance to be able to go uh, and to meet these elected members. It was my first time being able to do this in my life personally, and I'm looking forward to what we can do next. Um, your support and your encouragement is greatly appreciated in um, really trying to um, bring God into our nation, bring God into our households all across America. And um, we're so thankful for your support. We're so thankful for our leaders in UPF, in the Washington Times, and the Washington Times Foundation. Um, I really hope that we can do amazing things here in the near future. And um, all of this has come out of so much effort from the past. It's been so difficult for um, any of us to really have any kind of footing to stand on for a lot of our members who worked in the past to connect to members of Congress were really met with stiff opposition. And now it really feels like the door is so wide open and um, this wasn't lost on me. I, I really recognized um, how significant this was to engage with conversation, to be welcomed openly and um, at the Washington Times reception, um, there was a moment to recognize our founders, and it was someone who was not in our movement and not in our church, who specifically named our true parents and said that it was their effort um, in 1982 to bring about a new media organization at a time when it was really needed. And um, their crowd was so receptive to appreciating and recognizing true parents. and. Um, there was a really large uh, and loud round of applause and recognize them. It, was, it made me so happy that, you know, people could appreciate efforts that our true parents made that have really served America. Um, the Washington Times has been uh, really popular and it was on the desks of a lot of congressmen um, when we went into their offices already. And it is so important to bring God-inspired messages and, and um guidance and reporting um, into our nation. And so we're so grateful that True Parents made this effort and set the foundation so long ago, and it's really been bearing fruit. So I pray that we can do more and more great things for our True Parents. Um, if you really feel like you're wondering what's next for you, if you've blessed your ancestors vertically, if you've completed all of your horizontal blessings, maybe you can run for public office. Maybe there's a role that you could fill and make an impact. And um, if that's not the case, then maybe you'd be open to volunteering 
Um, there certainly could be um, some openings, I hope. Um, in my subregion, in subregion three, I believe there's around 18 states um, that you know are kind of my responsibility. And if we have more volunteers, then maybe we can reach out to more members of Congress and, and make even more of an impact. Uh, if either of those things interest you, maybe you can talk to your local UPF representative and um, find out what's possible. How could you contribute if your heart feels called to do so? I pray that, uh, brothers and sisters, you can be inspired. Um, with everything that's happening, we have everything we need. If there's something more that we need, we have everything we need to go get it. Um, please be inspired as well. Our attitude is, is what we choose, and, and we can choose to be inspired no matter what's happening around us. I'm so grateful for all of you. Please, please be blessed and have a great day. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Nathan, for your really beautiful te testimony. You are really doing a good job, you know, on a Capitol Hill, especially outreach. Wow, really, yes. John the Baptist, the key, you are right. Thank you so much, uh, Nathan, for your beautiful testimony. Yeah, thank you, Nathan, for such inspiring words um, and very sort of articulating your experience in Capitol Hill. Uh, very well for us to, to vicariously experience what you did. So thank you so much. Friends, this is, we're going to go into our our reflection sharing. So take a moment to just digest everything that was just shared. Dr. Young's message, Nathan's testimony. Share with whoever you're paired up with, and we'll be back here to share with everyone else. See you all in seven minutes.
with Hiromi Zhang and uh, Koa. I'd like to first call on Hiromi Thurston from Miami to share with us a reflection from today's morning devotion. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Dr. Yon and brothers and sisters. Yes. Um, my takeaway is uh, the sincerity is very important and save everything with sincerity. At most, sincerity moves heaven. So mm. the, we could move the heaven then all the activities and input will be realized. Mm. So that's very important. And also the, um, once we were very desperate and our, our heart is very sincerity. So then, yeah, the everything, the gods could be able to listening our prayer or to so that's also mm. and um, also i got that our destiny is growing and to bear the fruit mm. and to yeah for uh, our uh, witnessing and those things to we are going to be yeah be able to grow on self and yeah. also the, to we could do to get the fruit that God want to to ask to make make uh, raising and to to be able to the person can be able to do own life of faith to be multiple. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, and also the the process we need to have a personal touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one by one to make a artistic uh, relationship. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Wow, Hiromi Chang, you got a main point. Thank you, Hiromi Chang. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Hyung-Zang, for sharing with us your reflection. Next, I'd like to go to uh, Shahakwa to ask Otmar Weinman and Bruce to share with us a reflection from today's morning devotion. That is unexpected. <laughs> oh, really? Wow, wow, wow. Where are you now? Where are you now? Camp Shahakwa. Pennsylvania. With Bruce together. <laughs> hi, yeah. hi. Yes. yes. Okay, please well, share uh, your reflection. We're making our own model church right here. <laughs> At least for a week. <laughs> Dr. Young. Yeah. Last two days, we were in the big mess, you know? And mm. my very good friend, uh, Yoko uh, Lux. She said, first day, two parents are like this, sitting next to her. She's a spiritual girl. Mm. Left side is um, two, two mother. Right mm. side is two mother. Mm. Long time. Mm. Long time. Mm. I think that's a big thing to share. Mm. And, um, but anyway, faithful people like Otmar, I get to meet him in person first time. <laughs> kind of first time, so I'm so happy. I'm learning more things about you because he know you long time. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's my good friend. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I told I told Bruce uh, that I knew you from twenty years ago, and and twenty years ago I thought, why isn't every leader like Doctor Young? <laughs> so kind of kind of bit complaining, but today you gave the answer. You said you have to look at myself. I should have been a Doctor Young twenty years ago. Uh, so I have to look at myself. Uh, I cannot complain. Uh, 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 thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Otmar uh, uh, and Bruce, for your sharing. Kamsamida, you have a nice day. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, uh, Atmar and uh, Gabruce, for sharing with us your reflection. If you would like to be at Chautauqua, there is a free performing arts concert Sunday afternoon, this Sunday afternoon at Chautauqua, 2.30 p.m. If you're interested, just show up. You can sign up or show up. Contact Christopher Bush for more. And also, if you'd like to um, invite people, to, if you're inspired by morning devotion, would like to inspire people to join, feel free to share about it on Facebook, YouTube, or just share the link to them to join the Zoom room. We've had many new people who joined morning devotion for the first time, new members, and have had transformational experiences. So feel free to do so as well. And if you're especially inspired, there's going to be a link in the chat for you to donate to support Morning Devotion Ministries. Morning Devotion reaches all corners of the world because of the production team behind it. So if you'd like to support, just click that link in the chat. If you're online, just go to the link in the description below for YouTube, above for Facebook, or visit edu.familyfed.org. And also, as you all know, we have musical offerings every day and morning and opening prayers. So if you'd like to sign up for to sing a song or to give an opening prayer, contact Tal Zora. The email is in the chat, but it's if you're watching online, it's tzora, T-Z-O-R-E-R, at unification.org. And because today is Monday, we have our Monday specials. We've been singing on multiple Mondays. I don't know if you noticed a pattern, but we're going back to Worcester, Massachusetts, to hear from Mark Hanlon. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Hi, Hanlon. Hanlon. Good to see you all. All right. Nothing, nothing fancy today, but uh, sometimes the best songs are just the holy songs. Okay. All right. Okay. Just a holy song. Can you hear this? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. Be 
dancing together. Wow, thank you, Ma. Actually, this song, this holy song is my favorite song, but you really oh. play that song. I really feel so much enjoy. Thank you so much, yeah, Ma. Always you offering beautiful song. You. Thank you for offering this this beautiful holy song uh, this morning, Uncle Mark. And to close out of prayer, can I ask Akemi san, Akemi Hirose, if you could please close out of prayer. Our brothers and sisters, let's pray. Our most beloved heavenly parents, two parents, thank you so much for your day, July 21st, 2022. We learn so much your word and your love through that Dr. Yon. We are so grateful to be here on this earth. Uh, we, as we receive, as we uh, uh, move forward with your work and with your love. And thank you so much for all of your brothers and sisters especially here in the U.S. We pray for our home country, Japan, and we pray for the world, and we pray for the safety of our true mother. And uh, we start our new day and with your love and with your, your word. Uh, thank you so much. I pray in my name, Akemi Hirose, blessed, simple, uh, mm -hmm. Aju, thank you, Akemi Hirose. Hirose. <laughs> Our Clifton, Clifton Church pianist. Thank you. Kamsamida. Yeah. Thank you, Akemi san, for closing us out. It's a two point, short, sweet, beautiful prayer. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, thank you all for joining us for today's morning devotion. Hope we hope to see you tomorrow again at 6 a.m. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Have a nice day. Have a wonderful Bye. day. Bye. 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 Thank you.